These are California buckeyes, or horse chestnuts, fruit of a tree unique to California. This species, Aeschylus californica, is distinct from six other species found in the Americas. The California buckeye grows on dry mountain slopes and steep canyon walls, but only where its deep roots can reach sufficient moisture. It is found throughout most of the coast range and at lower levels in the Sierra Nevada. Along the coast range, buckeyes avoid the main redwood belt, but are found growing on its fringes. The circle shows where this film was made in the territory of the Nisanan Indians. The tree's broad palmate leaves drop off early in the summer, leaving the trees naked until the following spring, except for their gray fruit, which matures in the autumn. A single fully grown tree will bear 500 to 2,000 large meaty nuts, a total of 50 to 200 pounds. As it comes off the tree, the meat of the California buckeye is non-edible. Centuries ago, the Indians of this region discovered how to remove its poisons. Buckeyes have not been commonly processed and eaten, however, since the early days of this century. The fruit grows within a gray, pear-like pod, which sways and bobs like a pendulum in the autumn breeze. The tree carries this pod at the end of its willowy thyrse, or branchlet, until it either falls whole to the ground or the pod opens and drops its large round seed. The large white spot where it was connected to the pod makes the nut resemble the eyeball of a large animal. This led to its more popular name, buckeye. This is Dog Bar, a river bank of sand and gravel on the Bear River in the Sierra foothills. Grandma Enos, a member of the Nissanan tribe, is preparing to demonstrate their method of stone boiling and leaching. Two other methods were used by different tribes. With one method, the nuts were soaked a very long time in running water. The other baked the nuts in an underground oven before leaching. The buckeye nuts have been gathered by hand, picked off the tree, or collected from the ground after they have fallen. Next, the leathery gray outer husk must be shucked off. This leaves the nut enclosed by its mahogany brown inner shell. Within this tough inner shell is a snow white kernel. If eaten raw, it would be bitter tasting and very poisonous. Tannic acid makes it bitter. Its lethal element is a poisonous alkaloid. The rest of the kernel is 80% carbohydrate and 5% protein. Taken alone, these are excellent nutrients. When properly treated in one of the traditional Indian ways, the bitterness and poison can be removed. The remaining buckeye then has a food value and flavor similar to the cooked white potato. Since the shiny inner shell is practically impervious to water, it must be cracked before the nuts are boiled. Here in the Sierra, these cooking baskets are always of coiled weave. In some regions, twine baskets are used. Either type, coiled or twined, is watertight. From prehistoric times, these Indians have practiced stone or basket boiling. The secret of this method is to stir the contents frequently so the hot rocks do not burn the fibers of the basket. The stones must be carefully selected. Fine grain stones, such as soapstone, do not crack from the heat. The very hot stones are skillfully removed from the fire with long wooden tongs.
Dunking them in a basket of water removes the ashes. Transferred to the cooking basket, they bring the water to a surprisingly rapid boil. When a stone has expended its heat, it is returned to the fire for reheating, while newly heated stones replace it in the cooking basket. With such violent boiling, only about 20 minutes are required to make the white buckeye meats soft and thoroughly cooked. While the buckeyes cook, the leaching pit is prepared. First, a shallow pit was leveled off in the gravel of dog bar. This was lined with fine sand. The sand is being smoothed carefully to form the filter bed. Finally, the sand will be covered with a layer of large leaves. With the boiling finished, the stones are removed, leaving the cooked but still poisonous kernels. The buckeyes must now be mashed to free the meat from the skins. A stone or wooden pestle is used for the mashing. This food was processed and eaten almost entirely in season. Unlike acorns and pine nuts, the buckeye does not store well, making it less useful to the Indians as part of their food economy. More water is gradually added. Continual stirring makes a thin gruel of the meal as it separates away from the leathery skins. The skins are fished out with the hands, squeezed and put aside to be later discarded. When the gruel is ready, it is poured gently into the leaching pit. The layer of leaves, in this case maple leaves, which now cover the filter bed, prevents the meal from mixing with the sand beneath. The poisonous elements, now dissolved in the water, gradually percolate down through the leaves and sand into the gravel below. Stray bits of buckeye shell appear. From time to time, Grandma Enos carefully removes the fragments of shell. Water is still kept heating near the fire. Grandma Enos makes trip after trip to the river's edge to bring up fresh supplies of cold water. Properly tempered with hot water, it is poured slowly over the leaching meal. Now, about an hour after leaching began, Grandma Enos cautiously samples the meal.
certain spots are still bitter. So more tepid water is poured into the pit to completely leach out all the bitterness and poison until sampling indicates only the nutrients remain. The pit has been left to drain until the meal is now quite dry and firm. Removing it from the leaves is a delicate operation done with the fingers or with the palm and fingers. It is now a wholesome, nutritious food, well cooked and free of the buckeye's noxious elements. It may be eaten in this form as a stiff, heavy mush, or by adding a little water, it may be drunk as a soup. Eaten alone, buckeye mush and soup taste flat and quite flavorless. The Indians usually ate with it certain native savories, such as dried deer meat, roasted pepper nuts, native salt, and other condiments. These helped make it more palatable, and some Indians preferred it to other staples, such as acorns. So buckeyes were a frequently eaten food, second only to acorns in the dietary economy of many California tribes in times past.